Hello and welcome back to Tripod Talk, the official podcast of What Pictures, where we talk anything and everything about films. My name's Matt Lidster, I am your host, and with me to my right is Adilan Moir. Hi, yeah. And to my left is Miss Sophie Ellis. Hi. We are Tripod Talk. That is us. <laughs> We're not a band. Yeah. <laughs> we are Tripod Talk. We are Sex Bomb. One, two, three, four. Nice. Is, yeah, film reference. Scott Pilgrim. Yes. Immediate quiz. That's what. That. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and <laughs> what we're talking about today is uh, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. We've just—it's fresh. We've just got back from the cinema. It was uh, first thing, quick, just quickly. Good, bad, good. Really good. Right, okay. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, we. We'll get into it. We, yeah, we will. But first. <laughs> yeah, Matt. <laughs> yeah, Matt. Oh yeah, but first, um, film news. Anybody sure. got any film news? I'll let you go first. If you want. Nah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got three little bits of film news because I don't want to take it away from you. All right, well, I don't have any film news, to be honest. I've got a big thing later on. Okay. <laughs> I took one headline, so do with it as you will. Steven Spielberg is remaking West Side Story. Mm-hmm. Ah, I heard rumours about this, yeah. Have you seen the original? No. Do you know what it's about? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's uh, like a modern-day Romeo and Juliet and one of the um, men falls in love with the rival's sister. And it's okay. about them not being together. I'm not sure if it's a musical. Um, and then from an article, Scoot Away Superheroes Drive Off Dom, the live arena tour universe is about to get a little bit bigger with Dino sequel, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. And apparently it's having a tour in show. A tour of, of what? Like, <laughs> Jurassic, the Jurassic World sequel. It says scheduled to kick off in the States in autumn 2019. The show will then head overseas, much in the fashion of the recent Fast and Furious event. Oh, I've seen that, yeah. They're doing like stadium shows with certain films and stuff now. What? Do you remember like, do you know, like Top Gear did that live event? Okay. Yeah. Then I think I saw like on a bus Fast and Furious were doing one. So I presume it's saying that they'll have cars from the film there. Yeah. And have like appearances by like What are they going to bring to the Jurassic Park one? A dinosaur? It says a <laughs> yeah, blend probably. of animatronics and performer operated, uh, operated uh, characters bringing a herd of the beasts to the stage for what promises to be a blend of a stunt show and 3D attraction. Yeah, and then they'll bring in like the third assistant director or something. As well. yeah. <laughs> they'll be like star of the film and it'll be like the guy who opened the door for them when they got on a train. But I don't know. It's a weird new way of Strange. making money. They seem to be pushing. Mm, yeah. And the final one is just really quickly. Hans Zimmer is to score X Men: Dark Phoenix. Hmm. Mm, he's getting into some interesting project. I thought he'd stay away from super. Uh, yeah, superhero films. To be honest, but X Men haven't been very superheroish recently, though. I guess like they yeah. have been quite heavy time travel kind of random stuff going on in there. I should probably watch all of them if we're going to the cinema and watching the other one. It's yeah. alright, you've got till November, so you're fine. Because New Mutants got push, pushed back. Pushed. Till, yeah, pushed back till next year. <laughs> so that's not coming out anytime okay. soon. Uh, Dale, do you have any, wait, do you have any stories? No, or? that was... That was it? Well, the, all right. One of the things I knew was that after that West Side Story, then Steven Spielberg said he's definitely going to go on to the new Indiana Jones film. Oh, right. Although there really yes. isn't much known, like about 2020, I think they said it was going to get released, but they still haven't really settled on a cast or anything yet, but be interesting to see whether they'll be able to kind of like get that back off the ground into mm. kind of, because I feel like for a generation now, it's kind of not, ex- like Indiana Jones isn't really a part of childhoods as much as they were beforehand, whereas stuff like, you know, Star Wars and Lord of the Rings has kind of persisted. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see, it does need a reboot, whether they can actually kind of pull that off. So. Okay. Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say, if if anything, the, the, they should probably just make something new for the new generation. Like, Indiana mm-hmm. Jones is kind of done now. And, um, yeah, let's bring, bring someone... Because like, we were talking about Uncharted a couple of... Probably months ago now <laughs> that it mm-hmm. was. But that's kind of like this generation's version of Indiana Jones. Because most young people would have kind of resonated with that character as well. Yeah. To kind of see him into the... I don't know. Just seems a bit it's of a waste part of... the whole general thing of just remakes and reboots and stuff yeah it's a bit disappointing but mm. i do think you could like give him a bit of a sense of humor about himself and make him a bit younger and cooler and it's the kind of character that they could get to work for a younger audience now so i do think it could work i'd be interested to see how it kind of pans out i know as well a new thing that i haven't heard about before is sky are now going to start releasing original films it's something that they've just announced oh, oh wow so the first <laughs> one up apparently is called monster family 
It's a CGI animation, a uh, range of classical mo- classic movie monsters, voice cast including Nick Frost and Jason Isaacs. That's coming in March. Ooh. Then they're going to do the Hurricane Heist, which is basically a Fast and Furious ripoff football <laughs> film called Final Score with Pierce Brosnan, but Sky getting into the original movie thing. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Yeah, so that'd be interesting. They obviously kind of they're gonna start a new channel, obviously. Sky Cinema original films, but now they're gonna get their throwing their weight behind the whole streaming original thing. It'd be interesting mm. to see whether Sky can get a bit more of a foothold. I wonder if that's anything more to do with the whole Fox acquisition. Possibly. Because kind of Fox has kinda of sold off all their movie rights stuff and then they also had a big big much bigger stake in Sky. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's how they're starting to do that instead with that platform so that could be quite yeah. and just interesting wanna, just as like an example as well of the kind of like i do think this is a good thing going on with these different providers of films and different people kind of getting involved with artists and stuff so for example damien chazelle who's the guy who did uh what was the drumming film called again i love that whiplash film. whiplash and la la land he's signing on to do a musical drama called eddie with netflix last year he signed on and now apparently he's working on something for apple as well which is a tv series Oh. And he's got a film coming out with Ryan Gosling playing Neil Armstrong. But it's just like, clearly, as creative people now, there's so many more different avenues for them to go down. So mm. if they can kind of keep keep kind of a good enough rein on everything, I think it could be an interesting way forward for people. Like, there's a lot more... Whereas back in the day, if you, liked, if you were obsessed with Scorsese, you had to wait, like, two, three, five years for the next film. Yeah. Now you've got these people who you can be, like, inspired by, can keep throwing out new different kind of things, different kind of media and stuff all the time. So this episode is sponsored by Sky. <laughs> Not Sky, <laughs> Sky, <laughs> sod off. <laughs> uh, but no, that sounds interesting. Uh, you got any more film news? That's me. Oh, okay, I'll go on to my big-ish thing then, which is going to really tank if no one knows what the films are. But the Oscars came out this year, like the Oscars, uh, Oscar nominations, and I'm going to go through some of uh, what's been nominated. Okay. Oh, are we excited for it? Mm-hmm. I'm always curious yeah. to see what gets some approval and there's usually like a big there's like a feminist thing going on or a racial thing going on that's part of the storylines <laughs> so it's yeah. interesting to see how that plays out as well do you know who's hosting it this year? Uh, is it oh. Jimmy Kimmel? yeah because I just saw a story a while ago about do you know Get Out? I think mm. we've have we all seen Get Out? Okay. Oh, do you yeah. know the, the guy who plays his mate little Ralph yeah. the guy back home oh, yeah. he mentioned that he, he was on Jimmy Kimmel's show he said he hadn't gotten an invite yet and Jimmy Kimmel was like, I'm hosting, you can cut, I'll make sure you can get there. And he's like said he'll take him with him as a guest. Um, but he was just like, why hasn't, why oh. haven't you got an invite? You're a fairly big part of the film. And he yeah. was like, don't know, I'm not sure. Just have, <laughs> They sent out a first batch of invites that wasn't one for me. No way. That's rude. Mm. <laughs> a little bit, but there you go. He was a, he was a good, really good character in that. Yeah, well, yeah. sorry, go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. Uh, but yes, uh, I c- it comes out on uh, March the 4th. Should we stay so on? we got a bit because <laughs> they show it late, don't they? We should do a live stream now. Uh, see, I'm just going to call out. It seems like there's a lot more. I was saying to you the other day, there's a lot more um, nominations like per category. Yeah. Because um, best picture has got nine. Nine. Nine wow, okay. films nominated. I remember for they it. pushed up to like seven maybe a while mm. ago, but I don't remember there being nine. I don't agree with that many being out it's a weirdly specific number as well Can yeah because the lead... <laughs> <laughs> yeah because with the lead actors and uh, yeah with the lead actor uh, there's only five nominations with the actresses there's six like, it seems to be a bit it seems a bit unfair on people in the past as well like if there was only five nominations for lead actor or yeah. whatever like 20 years ago you would have you'd now you could now pretty much quite easily get an Oscar nomination compared to what it might have been a lot more difficult. <laughs> He's breaking the studio again. It's fine. I have uh, a temper sorry. problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I hate too many categories. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so best picture. We've got Call Me By Your Name. Yeah, I'm hearing good things. Not got to see it yet. Okay, I've not French actually heard it yet. Who's meant to be good in that. Who's coming up a bit. A bit one of oh, those like... Right. Teenage heartthrob dudes, I reckon. Hmm. So we'll see if he picks up. Hey, yeah, Matt, that's, you'll be interested in that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Darkest Hour. That's in the cinema at the moment. Yes, I do want to go see that. It looks really good. Yep. Dunkirk, mm-hmm. uh, Get Out, mm. Lady Bird, Phantom Thread, which I've not heard anything Daniel about. Daniel Day-Lewis. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love Daniel Day-Lewis. He's a genius. So has no idea who Daniel Day-Lewis is. Oh, my is. God, I've seen everything he's done. <laughs> he's amazing he's the most insane character actor in human history Matt mm. was literally naming everything he's in I was like no no, no heard of no 
And even you show me a picture, I don't really recognise it. I could, yeah. like, teach a course on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird how much of his stuff I've liked. <laughs> Moving on. Um, also, The Post, The Shape of Water, and the film Three Billboards Outside Ebb- Ebbing, Missouri mm-hmm. have all been nominated for Best Picture. You got a prediction? Uh, yeah, I'm thinking Get Out. I was thinking Get Out might win as I well. I hope so. I really hope so, uh, but I think it's mainly because of the, like, the stuff from last year kind of staying around. Although I wouldn't be mm. surprised if something like The Post, like one of those Oscar baity type things, just wins it and it's just a bit kind of dull. Because I haven't really seen or heard anything about The Post, but it's like a Spielberg mm. film. Pretty Are you going to watch it? Not that arse, to be honest. If It might do at some point, but... Not not particularly excited about it, but it seems like the kind of film that's made to win awards, and it might just. Do you, want, do you know when there's like a controversial year where there's a few films people are already pushing for? Yeah. Mm. They sometimes go for just an outsider, straight down the road one. Yeah, even though I said get out, I think I'm actually going to go with uh, the Darkest Hour, or just mm. Darkest Hour, mainly because um, it's about Churchill and it's in the war, and most wartime stuff usually get like a like a notch up from compared to other films so I reckon that is in a good I would be more I'd more expect that film to get an actor award mm. for like mm. for Gary Oldman or for Creston Scott Thomas if she is even nominated but that seems like a film that more I would be quite happy I mean like I think I need to watch it again because I, we, none of us were that enamoured with it going out but I wouldn't mind Dunkirk winning I think maybe it's a film that you have to watch again and you have to have like a bit more of your own environment and be in the right headspace for. Yeah. So maybe that's maybe that would, maybe that kind of invalidates it a little bit. But I wouldn't mind that winning either. Mm. Yeah, no. Because I think I was a bit harsh on it coming anymore. out of it. But yeah, I'm not really sure. It's hard to predict now, especially with so many. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll go on to some other stuff. We got lead actor. We got. Uh, oh, I just clicked them. Go away. Oh. Sorry. Um, thank you, Tim- <laughs> Timothy <laughs> Chalamet. That's the dude uh, I'm talking about. Chalamet, Chalamet, um, call me by your name. Daniel Day-Lewis, Phantom Thread. Uh, Daniel Kaluuya. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> oh, I've just... bumped. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Daniel Kaluuya? Kaluuya, yeah. So, uh, yeah. In Get Out, Gary Oldman, Darkest Hour, and Denzel Washington in Roman J. Israel-esque. I know some people are a bit annoyed about the Daniel L nomination because nobody's heard anything about that film and it was a no. bit just give it <laughs> that's to the him. first time yeah. I've heard that film but, and there uh, were some snubs that I can't really think of right now but I'm sure we'll get onto them yeah. I, 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 my money's on Gary Oldman for that mm. I think it's kind of got to be him from the how different he looks and like what a kind of like Lincoln it's such an iconic part that if you do take it on and get it right I almost think you deserve all the credit for it because it could have burned like he could have gone down in flames so easily Mm. So I reckon Gary Oldman. Not that we, I don't know if we're ever deciding a prediction thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'm doing it now. Yeah. Uh, so do you have any predictions? I yeah. only know mainly Denzel Washington from that. So. And you've not even seen the film that he's actually. In. Exactly. So. <laughs> the guy uh, from Get Out. <laughs> I'd like it to be him. As far he was great. I, but mm. no, I reckon Oldman's got it with being Churchill. Yeah. I, I just think that that's. Yeah. Uh, lead actress, we're going to Sally Hawkins in the shape of the shape of water. Frances McDormand in Three Billboards Outside of Missouri. Go on. Mm. Uh, Margot Robbie in I Tonya. I never know how to say her name. Margot. No, uh, the next one I'm going to say is Swartz. <laughs> oh yeah, the one that's in Ladybird. Wait, where yeah, is it? Ronan. Oh, Saoirse Ronan. Saoirse Ronan, that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm very, I'm very sorry. sorry. Uh, in Lady Bird I and Meryl Streep. <laughs> 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 Sarcastic job. <laughs> oh no. Do I have to join in when I'm in? Is it like yeah. a household rule? Yeah. Oh, that'd be awesome. We'll just get everyone else's money. <laughs> and Meryl Streep in the post. And I just realised no one that's going to know what we're on about. But we are, we're, we're going to have a sarcasm jar in our house. Every time we're sarcastic, we have to put a quid in. <laughs> so be, yeah. It's necessary. Uh, <laughs> Speaking as an outsider. <laughs> uh, anyone for lead actress? What was he again? Um, Sally Hawkins. Maybe Margot Maybe. Robbie. I'd be disappointed if she got it. It'd feel like okay. just a like darling of the media type person getting it to me. Like I understand yeah, she's meant to be really good in it. I'd like Frances McDormand to get it. I haven't seen The Shape of Water, but Sally Hawkins is a uh, she's a British actress who's been doing really good stuff for like decades. So it'd be cool if she got one. Yeah. Because like, she's obviously going to be great in it. Mm. But I would like my maybe Frances McDormand. I'm going to say. I feel like it's got to win an award, and this will probably be the one it'll get. 
Yeah, I reckon any sort of drama is going to get it. So, and this Ladybird seems more like a comedy sort of coming of age thing. Mm, it's a coming of it's this probably a bit. It's one of those hard to place. Greta mm. Gerwig. They're always a bit funny, but very real. What else has she been stuff. in? The it's, Saoirse Ronan. Or, yeah, it really bugged me when I saw her. She was in that face. Hannah film. She was in. Uh, she's been in. She was in that Brooklyn film that came out last year. This probably isn't helpful, but. Not. <laughs> not really I know oh, she was well, in a few more things when she was younger that I can't really think of that she it might have been when she her. was younger that I've seen her I've de- I know a, like, a name from somewhere so not just right. from the Ellen yeah. show she was in The Lovely Bones oh yeah she was okay. in a, a I read the book I haven't seen the film of that oh, is it pretty fucking, yeah I thought it would be pretty destroying messed up yeah and she was also in the Grand Bud- Budapest book, Hotel oh. was she uh, yeah, I've seen the Grand Budapest Hotel oh she must have been in it for like 8 minutes very specific. <laughs> I always do really specific numbers. I always got called out on this at work. <laughs> All right, moving on to supporting actor, we've got Willem Dafoe in the Florida Project. Mm-hmm. Again, I've not heard that film. Woody Harrelson oh, in what? Three Billboards. I'm just going to yes. say Three Billboards from just now on. Three Billboards. Yeah, Three Billboards. <laughs> three Billboards. <laughs> three Billboards. <laughs> uh, Richard Jenkins in The Shape of Water. Christopher Plummer mm-hmm. in All the Money in the World, which is... Funny. Yeah, people were, people were a bit up in arms on that because it hadn't even been seen. He'd barely finished recording the part. Because he was replacing, you know who, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. and also <laughs> Sam Rockwell from Three of the Birds. Ah, oh, great! I'm very so, happy yeah. to have him there. Mm. Who yeah. do you prefer? Yeah. Sam Rockwell. <sighs> yeah, Woody Harrelson was great, but Sam Rockwell had a really he good absolutely part. Absolutely, we'll he, he looked yeah. like um, <laughs> the guy who plays Romero. From <laughs> Fate Motel. Oh, oh, what's he called? I know what you mean. He's Andre got an Italian. Garcia. He's got got an Italian name. It's not Andy Garcia. Is the entire time I was just looking at his eyelashes and stuff to see whether it looked like he had eyeliner on, like he does in bits. He doesn't, it's just natural eyes. It's yeah. his natural eyes. How insane is that? It's weird. I saw him on like a chat show and he was talking about it. It's like anyone, all anyone wants to talk to him about. <laughs> I can't remember his name. It's fine. We no, can move past I'm, it. I'm, okay, I was going to try and find it. No, it's later. fine. It's not important. Um, yeah, he was also uh, the mayor in uh, Mayor Garcia. That's why I thought it was him. In The Dark Knight. Uh, he was the man oh the yeah, man. yeah. That yeah. Florida project, actually speaking of, I haven't seen it either, but it sounds like kind of an interesting film. From what I've heard about it, it's set in like, it's a motel near like a Disneyland, and apparently all the people who work there in the off like in the off season just live in these motel type places, right? Because yeah. it's cheaper than getting your own place. And he just record, he just shot the film with like kids who lived in the actual motels, like the, none of them are actors, they're just normal people who live there. Hmm. And I've heard him like talking about how it's different working with people in a situation like that and whatever, but sounds like an interesting film to watch. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, supporting actress, we've got Mary J. Blige in, what? in Mudbound. Okay, heard about Alison that. Chaney in I, Tonya. Leslie Manville in Phantom Thread. Laura Metcalf in Lady Bird and Octavia Spencer in The Shape of Water. I know none of them. Okay, I know all Almost of them. Did, the Octavia Spencer one, so going back to film news because this is random. random do, you know, do you know what happened with that with Jessica Chastain and her? So they're both in a film that's coming out recently and Jessica Chastain found out what Octavia Spencer was getting paid and she said like she just wasn't happy with it so they went together to the studio to negotiate hmm. and she got Octavia Spencer paid six times what she was asking for because she was saying, you know, she's done this much work, she's got an Oscar nomination, mm. she's got this reputation, but you're paying her so little. So mm. it was like a big, people were kind of giving Jessica Chastain a lot of credit for actually kind of putting her money oh where dear. her mouth is. That she took Octavia Spencer with her when she went to the studio, because yeah. she knew she had a bit more leeway with the negotiating stuff. Mm. Mm. So that's kind of a, quite a big thing moving forward, I reckon. But I would say for that one, maybe, it, I think Octavia Spencer could win it. It'd be an interesting one. No one else is jumping out. And she already won one. Uh, yep, but she's good. Laurie Metcalf, actually, maybe. Who who's the mum in the Lady Bird? Do you know when we watched the trailer for? Yeah, her? she okay. looked like she was pretty good to mm. me, and she's been around kind of in the background doing stuff. You know the one uh, that was nominated there for the I Tonya. Yeah, yeah. would that be her mum? Yeah, yeah. She and looked like she'd be really good. She's really good as well. I would, I would, maybe she'll get that, and Margot Robbie won't, and that'll be the way the film gets the awards. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Uh, I would go into a lot. There is a lot of things, but I'm, I think I'm just going to keep it at the direct. Uh, cap it off at the director. Yeah. Oh, you don't want to talk about animation? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll bring that up. We'll yeah. bring that up. Best grip. Okay, we'll bring that up now then. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> this is very weird. But the animated feature, there has been a couple of different uh, nominations, which most people thought mm, it's a bit strange. So we've got the Boss Baby, which is now officially an Oscar-nominated film. 
the breadwinner, Coco, Ferdinand also, which I found a bit weird, uh, and Loving Vincent. I really want to watch Ferdinand and I really want to watch Coco. Hmm. Um, so. This is this is the one where I've got no idea about anything. <laughs> this is the one category where I'm just like no idea. Well, could you imagine us three showing up to Ferdinand Bull animated film like us three? <laughs> yeah, it would be a bit called the police. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just sat amongst. That's, like, Lego Batman movie got snubbed, did it? No, it was Best Picture. I'm just googling now to try and see what, what about because Co- apparently Coco was a snub for Best Picture, oh, so wow. clearly somebody sees it as that good. Mm. Boss Baby's the real shock in there, I'd say. Yeah. But I can't think of it. Can you think of a film that's come out this year, like an animated film that deserves more? No. I haven't really um, seen that many animated that's stuff. That's And there could be stuff that Nothing stands about. out. Mm. Which is maybe the reason why the Boss Baby got nominated. That's what I'm thinking. That was my only explanation for it. Yeah. We've got a few animated films coming up this year, though, so... Mm-hmm. Zootopia? Was that this year? <gasps> Oh, no, no, that might that be. Was, yeah. that, that, that'll be that's that's technically two years ago, I think. But uh, the only that's other one cool. that I can think of that might have got snubbed for Best Picture, especially considering there are nine different things, uh, Logan. Oh, of course, yeah, I didn't think about that. Because the only thing that I can see that it got nominated for was uh, Adapted Screenplay. Mm. Uh, I screenplay. can't really see it. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Real good screenplay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and also Baby Driver, and that only got nominated for uh, well, f- film editing and sound yeah, mixing. Yeah, think a director. And yeah, I know about that, didn't it? I was whinging about it before. These, <laughs> these two haven't seen it, and they were like not interested at all, but I had to get it off my chest. We do really need to see it. <laughs> no, it's, I'm really interested in the film. I just have not got around to watching it yet. Uh, I haven't really seen anything for any of the films that we kind of brought up uh, over the last year or so. Uh, apart from some of the stuff recently, but I'll go to uh, Best Director and then we can start talking about Three Babur, uh, <laughs> which is now what I'm going to call it. No, and no, I'm very happy about this because Dunkirk got nominated for Best Director, which means Christopher Nolan finally has an Oscar nomination. Uh, yes, which is very okay. good. Uh, Calm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Get Out, Jordan Peele, Lady Bird, uh, Greta Gerwig, uh, Phantom Thread, Paul Thomas Anderson, and Shape of Water, Guillermo del Toro. There's you no, had to do it there's nobody in that that I'd be disappointed if they won. What were they again? I think Paul Thomas Anderson could does it could get one. Guillermo del Toro definitely maybe should because he's been working on that for forever. <laughs> nah, I'm happy with all those people winning. Yeah. I like the way you both pronounce that name. What? Guillermo del Toro? Yeah. I did Spanish yeah. in school. I'm basically <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> that, that's how that works. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically how it works. So yeah, uh, there is uh, yeah, there's a lot more to go through. Nothing that I'm really kind of bothered about. They're the big ones, apart from original score. Dunkirk, Hans Zimmer, my boy. Uh, anything else? Do you no. think Three Bubber should have got a writing or directing one? Three Bubber. All right, I'm not going to join in with that. I know. It's dismissing the film. <laughs> I like the film. Do you think it should have got a directing one? Uh, Do you think that you would have booted anybody out for it? Nah, because it was quite. I like this. Wait, it was written it. and directed by, by the same donor. person. Yeah, uh, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, did it get. It got original screenplay nod. Yeah. So. Have you ever watched the Oscars live? No. Would I've, you? I've, I would, yeah. Although I know there's a lot of adverts and filler and stuff like that. Oh, is there? Yeah. And apparently, like, the, it's, it's such a long show to record that the people there just get drunk and you're just, like, yeah. like less interested. <laughs> becomes a bit sloppy as the thing goes on. Yeah, I couldn't imagine staying up and watching Oscars. I debated betting on it like a few years ago. I was like, I know so much about films. This is this should be what I gamble <laughs> on. But I probably wouldn't have panned out. We should Let's all go make do it this them. year. Yeah. <laughs> well, we maybe all... not watch them. Oh, not not what I meant. Bet like, on them. Yeah. yeah. I'll do predictions. And we can we can compete so you get the most. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah, we'll have to make an effort to watch a fair few more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Know, yeah. But to be fair, if we're watching films regularly until, and the fact that they're released in the UK after America, mm. like we should actually end up watching a lot of these films as they come out yeah. over the next couple of months. Oh, yeah. Because I know like Phantom Dread's coming out, Lady Bird's coming out, Shape of Water probably is coming out at some point. Yeah, soon. the posters aren't down for Star Wars out already, so... So, yeah, we can maybe power through them in an afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, if yeah. you want. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, those chairs are pretty comfortable. Yeah, they are. I reckon yeah. I could do a day in them. If I had enough food. Yeah, I was going to say, we'd have yeah. to stock up, wouldn't we? Or we could yeah. just run in and out. Just keep running in and out to bat. 
put all like <laughs> leave, leave food like <laughs> just leave like a bunch of like snacks in the car and just run out in between each film. <laughs> That'd be a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. We should maybe do that. Also, have you seen that hack that someone did? And they got like basically they got this polystyrene ball and cut it in half. And then hollowed out the middle of it, so it made her look like she was pregnant. But she put a load, yeah. a load of snacks in the in the bowl. So when it came to actually get in there, just take whip off the top, like bring this back out. You got a bowl full of yeah, snacks. Take one for the team. Wouldn't, so. wouldn't <laughs> someone notice? No, no because she, she, she looks pregnant. What on the way out? She put the bowl back on. Yeah, because it's still yeah. hollow inside, so it's the same size. That is way too much. Just take a bag. No one checks. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, no one checks. Just maybe in case you want to bring. To in be more. fair, I think she was an American, and they might be a bit more militant about yeah, it there. Maybe. And maybe like here, if you could just be like, people paid enough that they don't really care that you could literally just like dangle a like pack of Harry Potter in front of their yeah. face, they wouldn't care. Plus, yeah. now we have the actual cinema ticket. If we wanted to, we could buy popcorn for the money that we save. Yeah, we do get twenty five percent off food and drink with that ticket as well. Yeah, which is good. Might be worth it. It depends how good the nachos are. I know, you have to try them out. If they're good, then this is a whole, this is the start of a, like, worrying time. This is the start it's of my Channel 4 documentary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, shall we go into three, build, b- b- build, the build? <laughs> yeah, b- 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 Sure. So what was the story, Sophie? Hey. <laughs> are we still do- are we doing hey. this? What was the story thing? Well, I'm going to have to that. blur that out now. Right, one of you's definitely swore before I did. Yeah, I've swore like four times, but I've tried to cut myself <laughs> off. <laughs> I'm not used to it. My okay. job, I'm only a lawyer. <laughs> we swear all the time. <laughs> okay, so I've got an official part, so I don't have to explain it. Oh. After oh, months have passed without a culprit in a daughter's murder case, Mildred Hayes makes a bold move painting three signs leading into a town with a controversial message directed at William Willoughby, the town's revered chief officer. When his second-in-command officer Dixon, an immature mother's boy with a penchant for violence, gets involved, the battle is only... Excel- uh, uh, oh. oh, made bigger. Let's just go with that. <laughs> I'm really not going to embarrass ourselves to try and do that. I can't. It's okay. What was the original word? Can I say Definitely it? not. No. <laughs> Let's move on. So, yeah, what did you think really of the film? Bigger. What I thought of the film, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was very, very good. Yeah. Um, I liked kind of going into it, not really, because I haven't really, I think I saw one trailer, if that. Yeah, and then it wasn't really kind of self-explanatory as soon as like you know the first scene came up you're just kind of finding more things out as you go through it because most things nowadays are kind of force fed to you it's like this mm-hmm. is that and that's this and blah 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 but this kind of lets it naturally pan out which I thought was really nice it's very well acted and really good interesting characters in it as well I was yeah um, it was a really good film mm. uh, I'm probably going to more stuff later on but Dale yeah I'm similar I thought it was really well written acted especially the acting i thought there was like some very detailed kind of acting if you get what i mean by that like kind of very small details could kind of make and break little like made little scenes for me Mm. that i kind of i guess we'll talk about in a bit yeah it was an interesting one as well i think i think it's a film that like if you think about and let it sit with you there's a lot of kind of philosophical moral ethical stuff in there yeah that you can really dig deep into if you give it a bit of time but also it just it's it's good enough at (laughs) Sorry. <laughs> no, no, that, that was my. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I just laughed right into that. That's going to deafen you. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. It's, it's the earphone. I touched the earphone and it made this noise. It was, no, it was a panic in both of your faces when I looked at you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you shouldn't make that noise. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't do that on that side, but this side. There you go. Sorry. Sorry. I thought it was just your butt. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) It's not. I've no idea what I was saying. I've no idea what I was saying. (laughs) Good film, yeah? Yeah, good film. (laughs) 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 Yeah, liked it. (laughs) So. Top balance. (laughs) So. You got anything to add right now? Uh, As much as I don't want to. Um, No, I really liked it sent me through a whirlwind of emotions like most films do but I ended up <laughs> crying like twice and then Very I quietly. laughed I laughed uh, <laughs> pretty loud at a certain bit like you don't expect it to be as funny as it was with little yeah. bits here and there but it's f- I really enjoyed it it's from the guy who wrote and directed In Bruges and Seven Psychopaths just in case anyone didn't know so it's got that same kind of darker offbeat sense of humour type stuff where like he's happy to, he'll happily throw in jokes at times where 
the most heavy, dense moments. And just, yeah. It's not going to hit 80% of the time, but the people it does, it's going to be really funny. Well, it, it really, like, engrosses you in because there's so many times where I felt tense, like, oh, my God, is she going to do this? What's going to happen to this? And I can't believe he didn't cry. No. See, I, I already mean, noticed that the fact that the guy who wrote it is a playwright. I could tell that you could. I could tell that watching it, and I could tell from the way, like you know, the dialogue and the way they were talking, the way it moves along. Yeah. And I just it was kind of refreshing to see something written with that kind of structure and not feeding the audience everything, but just mm. we'll set it up with acting and context clues, and if you pick it up, you don't. And everything's got a million different layers to it. Like I like films like that. That's why I like this guy. And it was good to see something like this getting some kind of major attention. The only thing I didn't like was uh, I noticed it. I didn't know whether you would have picked it up that some of the shots weren't in focus properly. Hmm. Like there's sometimes when there was a scene on her and it was just grainy, but it wasn't fully focused. And I don't I know whether that was in grain every now and then, which yeah. I don't really expect from films like that unless they're specifically going for that look. Yeah, it was like in uh, the trailer for Lady Bird. Yeah. I noticed that was quite grainy, but that seemed to be the style that it was in. Yeah. So it's the way I, they're made as well. Like, I know the way, the, especially with Lady Bird, that that film would have been shot over two weeks. Hmm. Like, every day would have been packed to the brim, would start shooting, and it would have been have to, you know, there's a lot of adjustments made on the spot type thing, because it's not a major studio thing, and you're not giving a lot of money and backing and all that kind of big film thing. So I think yeah. that's kind of, you're going to see that sometimes, especially with the quality of the way you know cameras and screens and stuff nowadays didn't I, I didn't notice that to be fair but i guess i'm not as uh looking at it on like a kind of way the cake is made what's the phrase i don't know <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what i'm right. talking about i thought we were talking about films not babies <laughs> <laughs> my similes go cross hobby <laughs> is there anything that you didn't like in the film then uh not that i can think of right now no um did you notice woody house and saying i looks like we've got a war on our hands at some point because that one line of yeah. dialogue is one of my... Le- Again, I always I hate whenever I hear a film, like a line said in a film that I've heard before, mm. and that immediately took me out and threw me off. But uh, that, was, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to play it off. God damn it. All right. You made me believe it was a door. No, I know. I was yeah, trying to I play it off. I was like, I'll be able to pick that up. I could, have, I could have kept going, but I just couldn't keep a straight face. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> so, um, do you want to talk about the acting in it? Yeah. Yeah, Frances McDormand. I think that, that was the first time I've ever seen her in something. But apparently she already has an Oscar for something else. I'm not sure It what. might be for Fargo. Um, she joined the TV show Fargo. It was oh, based yeah. on a film by the Coen brothers. Right. She was amazing in that. And it might be for that. She plays a cop, a police person in that. But she's like very upbeat mum type girl. Yeah, oh, okay. and, but also in the horrific crime. And it's just those two contrasting. What, in the film? In the film, she's yeah, kind yeah. of optimistic oh, okay. and loving and caring, but she's also dealing with horrific crimes and stuff. So it's a weird contrast, but she's mm. good in that. She's been around for a long time and done always. Oh, yeah. yeah. Always great. I noticed on my research, but <laughs> I mean, not enough. it wasn't that much to actually find out what film she got an Oscar for. Did you just but... pronounce it research? research. All right. Yeah. Oh. Leave it. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, all right. Okay, anyway, going back to her accent, I thought it was fantastic. Like She had some great lines as well, especially with the priest. Yeah, in oh her my house. God, yeah. that yeah, was that an was, amazing take. It's a great little, like, there's a whole great monologue in that bit, wasn't it? <laughs> um, I'm trying to think, just, just the way that she reacted in certain situations as well. I quite like this. Is this is going away from acting, but how everything kind of crossed over with each other. And I don't want to go into too many spoilers, but you know how one thing leads to another, but it's someone's fault within this, and then it kind of transpires into something else, and then it's their fault, and they kind of see in the repercussions of that. Uh, I've got, I'll go into spoilers later on, unless you want me to just kind of say what I mean, that now. was super unclear. I had no idea what you're talking about. So, for example, <laughs> there's, a certain, there's a certain minutes, scene... Like, like, half an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's eight, a, sorry, did you say eight minutes ago? I know, I don't like... I like specific <laughs> numbers. But yeah, there's a scene uh, where there is uh, something to do with a police station, and then something happens with someone who is in okay. there, and uh, then... They're kind of with that person in the next scene, but it you know they don't know that they're the cause of that, so it's just kind of you know things like that. Like they keep overlaying stuff. I thought that was there's quite a joke in a car, is what he's referring to. 
with yeah, I know what you mean. It's a good it's a good moment that actually. Yeah, it's a good little oh, yeah, dancing yeah. of that. <laughs> I forgot what the joke was. I was like, huh? It's, yeah. it's not a joke. <laughs> it's kind of, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I know what you mean. Also, there's a line that Woody Harrelson says uh, later on in the film. I'm not going to spoil what happens unless we do later on. Uh, that is sort of a monologue because he's speaking over. Uh, it's like a voiceover part. Uh, about trying to catch the killers and how sometimes it can happen like that mm -hmm. and then it kind of does i thought that was a nice little touch as well yeah well it does and it doesn't yeah because it doesn't quite... well yeah but yeah because yeah. it, it really sets you up to be like oh no way this is what yeah. he said and mm. then obviously you realize that things don't always play it out does that mess way with your expectations yeah. yeah i just thought there was a few there's a few moments in the film which i thought were really good just to show almost as like as like a real like a six second scene of just really good acting you could show people one of them was woody harrelson kind of has a very subtle almost breaking down into emotion bit where he starts to kind of looks like he's gonna start crying so i thought that was amazing like it's good to see woody harrelson do something really really good yeah. sam rockwell as well has a bit where he flinches which <laughs> i nearly absolutely i nearly <laughs> lost my absolute i nearly lost my call laughing but i had to kind of pull myself together there also the kid who plays the son I want to do this on like some recorded medium. Okay. I guarantee. <laughs> okay. That I guarantee he's going to win an Oscar at some point. Lucas okay. Hedges. He was okay. in Manchester by the Sea. I think he's good. I think he's going to win an Oscar at some point. Okay. So that's my comeback to when he's like <laughs> sixty-five and whatever. I can like, yeah. <laughs> can I just take us out of the uh, the film for just one second? Mm -hmm. I've got some f news related to Manchester by the Sea and Casey Affleck who uh, won Best Actor last year, yeah. is supposed to present the Best Actress uh, thing at the next Oscar like nomination. Um, oh, okay. He's pulled out of that because two people have filed lawsuits against him for, I think it was sexual harassment. Oh. Uh, this more so, recent ones, because he, there was some in the past as well which he had to pay off. Oh. That's why at the actual last year's Oscars, it's kind of a, it's kind of become quite, it's kind of quite funny, but Brie Larson, <laughs> Brie Larson was presenting him mm. and uh, she like wouldn't, she didn't like shake his hand or anything and she wouldn't like look at him or give him any kind of congratulations oh and just walked away and then some people have like asked her afterwards what was were you saying anything about what he's being accused of doing when he did that and she was like i think my actions speak for themselves and then just won't answer any further questions well, yeah. oh. well clearly he's a bit of a dirt bag mm. and he's to be fair i do think i don't know whether it's the mature thing to do but he's just said he's not going at all to this year's oscars yeah. Well, the, the, like their PR people said that you know they don't want to detract from the fact that uh, you know they want the main focus to be on mm, the women winning the awards. Yeah, then that. So I kind of get it, but I do think again he's one of those kind of insane character actor people. So it's just it's weird then when they're suddenly expected to be role models when it's like an actor and he's doesn't again it's not right what he's doing, but he never kind of signed on to be. A role model type thing mm. so just let him do his job and if he's an arsehole he's an arsehole fair enough we'll, we'll leave it at that okay. we'll go back to the film for one second sorry. Uh, uh, three ba -ba. <laughs> yeah the the main scene it shouldn't be the main scene that stuck out for me but it's one that made me laugh you know when she she flicks cereal at some <laughs> yeah that shouldn't stand out to me but it did like that kind of relationship and then he calls her an old <laughs> sorry you're gonna have to think you and she's like i'm not old but that sat, like, <laughs> yeah. sort of relationship is kind of... It's nice to see offbeat family relationships in films. Yeah. Because... <laughs> see, it's funny how you say that, because then what happens straight after that? When the dad comes? The dad, yeah. <laughs> see, I think that was a really... Did you see how immediately the dad and the son started help working together to pick... Not to give anything away, but, mm. you know, like, they started rearranging the room after this incident and things, and they started tidying up after yeah. the dad had a bit of loss of control. See, I, I think that's, that's very interesting. Go on, what do no, you I think? was going to say, it was... It was like really interesting uh, in the fact that he seemed really excited to see him then to see what happened straight after because mm -hmm. he was like oh dad and then it was just, think, and the next thing and he's holding something and it's like oh okay I, I, yeah see again I think that's something that they didn't really go down but it's an interesting one like a lot of I think that's something that happened with a lot of kids like that where like even when dads can be well, he, well he's somewhat he's abusive in the film yeah. we gave yeah. that away without giving it away um hey <laughs> that, can be, that can be my catchphrase. <laughs> that's, that's what, yeah, let's go another t shirt. That'll be it. What? Someone types in, I'm not giving it away, but I'm giving it away. I'll put that on a t shirt. I'm <laughs> sure someone really wants yeah, that. I'm sure someone wants that on a t shirt. I don't want that on a t shirt. Bill <laughs> <Still laughs> just comments <laughs> so we can get it. Just set up a fake account. Uh, <laughs> Kevin Durant. Not a reference you guys will get. All right. <laughs> What was I talking about? <laughs> the like, relationship. Their relationship. Oh, yeah. But just the fact that, like, 
you know, they, he kind of accepted his dad as he is and he has that loss of control, but it's not a judgment. It's just a, we've got to kind of move on together as a family type thing situation. Mm. Like he kind of normalized it so much mm. that it was something that a lot of people wouldn't even notice, but it kind of says a lot about the way that they've lived as a family for as long as they have. So, thanks. Yeah. without saying what's on the billboard, do you agree that that was a, uh, a good move? Oh yeah, definitely. It was like, um, what's his name? Bill Willoughby says Woody Harrelson's character. It's a chess move. Mm. That's what it. You know, that's the, that's essentially what it is because that's how things eventually managed to get pushed forward in the investigation. So yeah, I mean, it's exactly what needed to happen. I think it spoke a lot as well about like how grief isn't necessary, especially towards the end about how the whole grieving process. I think the film was a lot about and how it's not about specifics or um or like logical feelings and what's right to blame and stuff it's just about people people are angry and uh they want to kind of the way the way kind of your emotional kind of journey goes in, in those kind of moments i think it was a good way of like it was almost like a metaphor for the whole thing of that with the way the billboard wasn't quite the ways it was fair and the ways it wasn't fair and the ways people reacted to it and her mm. and the way kind of i just thought it was a good like almost a metaphor just to show how she was kind of not dealing with her emotions and, and how she kind of needed to get past certain things. Yeah. See, I thought it was quite a good metaphor for the sense of how people react in today's world because everyone was against the billboard just because it had... Uh, someone's name on it. it not, not just someone's name on it, but the way, like, you know, other words like rape and stuff like that the as actions. well. The actions, yeah. Um, yeah, but what actually happened and that was the reason why people were upset. And it's like... we. we we live in this world now where everyone gets so offended by anything that it was nice to see something where someone was like, you know what, this is the real world. This is how it needs to be for it to actually, you know, for something to actually get done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree in that sense. But you could also say, you know how the song says, I, there's moments where I'm not thinking about what happened to my sister and now I have to see it every day on the way home. Mm -hmm. There's people that would have children that drive past and question that and there's sort of a limit on that yeah someone you like mean. you don't need say your 11 year old or your 10 year old knowing what happened in a local area but i think that's the kind of argument maybe the maybe the, the point that we're trying to make is like that that argument is used a lot by like parents about you know gay couples being out and about and stuff it's like yeah. why do i have to tell my kids about it it's like well it's your job as a parent to explain and to we shouldn't have to kind of edit the way we want things to happen because of other people and trying to and try to upset their sensibilities yeah so obviously there's there's a fine line between what's appropriate and what's not going to play at all and she couldn't have put like pictures up there and stuff but yeah. the words it's kind of it's a different story isn't it mm. and putting passing the blame to the also the fact that it had the chief's name there not to give too much away yeah. but she, her attitude was he's he's head of the pack yeah. he's he's to blame for this he's responsible mm. and just kind of like that attitude nowadays we're just anytime we have a problem you hire whoever's at the top of the you, you fire sorry whoever's at the top and then problem dealt with and it's like that doesn't really fix anything but a lot of the ways we want to deal with things in society is now it's like you know this company messed up we'll hire we'll fire their pr guy and yeah. then that'll do it when it's not actually addressing any of the problems yeah i, th I think that's more <laughs> it seems really offbeat but that's a football issue especially more than anything because it's like as soon as a team starts losing oh stuff, yeah that's true it's like yeah, management it's like yeah the manager gets I was fired. thinking more politically and like business uh, oh I know, I know that as well <laughs> <laughs> and I, I know that's what Football's you were going good, for sorry yeah. but yeah that that's one of the main things that's always bothered me about football in the fact that I know it's not a football thing. <laughs> it's just uh, if if a team starts losing, basically the, the manager gets fired. I'm aware. It's, of that. it's like <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with. It. <laughs> okay. okay, but yeah, we'll we'll leave it from there. Yeah, um, the, despite us having really good thoughts about it, um, you mentioned there was an article that didn't oh. really. <laughs> Did you expect me to have it? <laughs> you mentioned there was an article that didn't really agree. I saw one on the Guardian. Is that? It might be in the Guardian, yeah. Where it's, it's despite its awards, three billboards as a shallow look at race in rural America. It might have been something different. <laughs> Wait. Well, right. this says um, that despite the small town drama picking up four Golden Globes and will likely succeed at the Oscars, um, Get Out was 2017's truly essential film about race. Yeah. Uh, the, one, the one I was talking about is that one. It, the, the, I, 
I, right, go on. I don't think this film's really meant to be about race. Just for no. my Yeah, that's what I was going to say, because, like, it's not really about race. It's more it's... about greed and morality. I mean, not grief and morality in my book. Like, think about... What did I say? Greed. Oh, yeah, I think I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> greed, <laughs> greed, like, the fact that... You know, like, think about what she's going to do in the end, and how the fact that... I just think what it points out to me is how tenuous all of our kind of moral codes and our fitting in with society's rules are. Yeah. Because she wouldn't have just been a normal mother doing a job, messing about with the kids. Something awful happens, and then, you know, the standards in which she thinks she looks at the world and the way of reacting and behaving is just entirely just blown up. Yeah. And how close we all are. Like, we all think we're civilised and everything, but all it takes is, like, one thing to happen, and it can mess up your entire belief system. So I just think it was a pretty real thing to say, but that's yeah. what like that's what that film is telling me as well. Yeah, I mean the the way that they bring it round to being about race, it says now no movie is one thing. Star Wars is as much about interstellar conflict as it is about a teenager straining against the bonds of farm boy life, and so three bu- billboards is about grief and anger, parental and police responsibility, truth and reconciliation, but also about class, race, and rural America, and the levels to which. Uh, McDonough doesn't actually investigate or interrogate his own storytelling decisions in that regard are frustrating mm. but again I think it sort of pulls it away by trying to make it about that rather than focusing on the grief and you know the movements that she takes in that sense but again I don't think that there should be an entire article about them perceiving that wrong do you know what I mean? Yeah it's Ma- a- Matt's genuinely lost yeah. <laughs> just I don't get what face. the point is about racism because it's not it's not anything to do with the actual story it's just to do with one character and maybe like some of the way that people believe certain things within that town especially that town that is considered quite a racist town in itself anyway you tell but, I guess it's you like write how, on well, to no, that's, that's where it was actually based on it was, it was based on a specific place that is more notable notable for racism than anything no. I'm saying you should just tell <laughs> right, right, angry comment. Yeah, <laughs> Sign <please. more> pictures <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> Coming in. Dear God, not about race. <laughs> not everything's about race. Whoever yeah. this is, <laughs> it does. It feels a bit. I don't know, like clutching at straws to not. Because I get the fact that he's he clearly has some issues with race, and then he suddenly becomes like a kind of uh, character that you're on their side. But he but, mentions homophobia and stuff as well, so. You know. I think the main, like, the, obviously the director is trying to get across that, like, he only has so much time, and this is kind of backwards America City, so they're mm. going to have all these issues. And you can't go into everything with the detail he's gone into this stuff, but it's a part of the context. Yeah. So I think it's just someone being a bit too expectant of too much. Like, we can't, I can't hit and knock out the park every societal issue in one film. Yeah. It's going to need, we're going to need to mention him for some background and some context of the story, but. I think it's a bit you're asking a bit too much for him to nail the whole race thing yeah there's like an Irish playwright who has no idea about it. I think it would have been bad if he'd have tried yeah because he's got no real understanding of the kind of plight of black people in America whatever whatever so it's I think a he's stuck to situation. His, yeah he's stuck yeah. to his guns you know he's writing about grief and family and stuff and that's fine so yeah eat that guardian <laughs> <laughs> I'll write an op-ed piece right back at him so seeing so we're not doing spoils and stuff, maybe you want to jump into the five star movie review? All right then. Go on then. <laughs> cool. Shall we do it? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh good. Oh I right. sold chuck our phones on the floor. Damn it, the one <laughs> Oh Jesus so if you did that right into the bloody microphone. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Don't you do it as well. I was gonna scurry. You laughed right into it. I, I did laugh right into it. So it twice now. <laughs> I keep. I don't. Not used to having the headphones on. It's weird. Yeah. I can, like I can hear you better mic. than you can hear yourselves. <laughs> every time you move All around, right. that every makes me feel rapist. Like... <laughs> 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 you could cut that out. Right. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, the five star movie review. I've got... Sorry. <laughs> I like. We ready? Yes. Space. Yeah, we're ready. The five star movie review, where we go through films. That's that's how we do. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. Five questions. One question equals a star if we agree. If not, no star. Cool. Half yeah. stars are possible. Half stars are possible. Or they are consensus. up for debate. Mm-hmm. Uh, shall we start? Let's go. So, To the Bone last week got 4.5, right? It did. That's our highest score. Our highest score, indeed. Let's see. Um, 
anorexia comedy. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a comedy. <laughs> um, does... <laughs> Oh, right. say that. <laughs> it's fine. All right. <laughs> Does the story make any sense? Yeah. 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 All right. We're all fine yeah. with that. Past one star. We're in. <laughs> Does uh, did the film have a good ending? Oh, that was up for contention, because it kind of ends without giving anything away. Ends on a cliffhanger, and you don't know, like, where it's going to lead to if anything gets. Uh, you know, See, I'm going to no... say yes because I think that was deliberate part of it's part of the whole ethical moral dilemma they're putting you in is the fact that like these people are getting they're, they're resorting to increasingly like aggressive and out there actions, yeah. But they seem to be rational at the same time, so mm. it's just part of the question of like you know she's not lost her mind, she's aware of everything she's doing, mm. but she's doing these except like crazy things. So it's like what degree is she going to keep going? Yeah, because you can go full on nuts vigilante stuff but not to give anything away. But I think it's just part of the question is like, it's left to you to, to be like, from what you've seen of this person, are they going to follow through? Is this just something they need for a bit yeah. of healing and they're going to let it go? For both of, like, for all the people who are in that final scene, I liked it personally. Yeah, I, I thought it was a good turnaround as well. So I'm, I'm going to give it a yes. <laughs> you changed your mind. <laughs> you went, uh. See, yeah, I, I, I think... Go on. It's a bit of a difficult one because there were so many times, like we said when we came yeah. out, that it could have ended. I did agree. Mm. But I feel like it ended in a good way because you don't always know what's coming next and because they don't quite know what's going to happen next. Mm-hmm. It's a nice little relatable. They've not really planned part too the, much. Part of the whole film as well, as you, although you can start to guess what she does, like very unpredictable characters, very mm. unpredictable way it runs out. And it's kind of like an alive story in that it's not following any particular routines or things you'd expect. So yeah. to me, it's part of it. Like, how is this going to pan out? We don't know. These people with their situations and their way of thinking and what they've been through are going on this trip. And it's going to, are they going to make the decision or are they not? Can I ask you? <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? Before we oh, carry on with the review, I was supposed I to ask. Um... <laughs> oh, is that that funny? Oh, jeez. <laughs> that was another wheeze by Adele. We're, we're a mess today. Was, fine. Was the body terrible. Buried by where the... What? I know what you're talking about, where they keep to show the patch on the ground. Yeah. I don't know. Was she buried there? Was she killed there? Because surely, like, if it was blood after seven months, eight months, however long it had been, that would have gone away. I don't think it was blood. I think it was just, like, shadowy ground. And I know that, they, but, that she said that she'd buried her six feet under the ground. So, I obviously, they found the body and buried her. Maybe that was where it happened. Yeah, maybe. But... Because there was a fit, there was a couple of shots where it held on the ground beneath the sounds, basically, yeah. and I did notice them as well. Yeah, so beneath it could the be. Word, sorry. So like, you know, beneath the actual billboards, it held in like yeah. a certain spot on the ground for a bit that seemed to be covered in shadow. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I wasn't sure that that we. I guess we were both thinking maybe that indicated something to do with her. what happens to her yeah. in the film. But we're not sure not that could be it. something. No. That could be some open ended again. Yeah. Might have just been that was where they sat the shot from, but wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah. that where... So are we giving that the star? What was yeah. the question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did the it ending. have a good ending? Yeah, I like the ending. Yeah, okay, so it's got two stars. Uh, did you think there were believable characters? I am very much going with yes. Yeah, this. 100%. Very fantastically nuanced. acted. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just believed everything that they did. They said, Sam Rockwell in particular, I thought it was amazing. See, that's... He is in everything. I was yeah. thinking, like, that character, Sam Rockwell... So, you know, you get cliched characters in films that, like, start bigoted one way, and then they learn and they get better. And yeah. sometimes you see them in a film and you're a bit like, oh, just like you see them coming a mile off. Yeah. And it's a bit... The, 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 there's not enough that happens that makes it seem reasonable. This is one where I've seen like the change he went through based on who they set him up as beforehand. It just totally made sense to me. They did it right. And I was kind of like, I was a bit worried that it was going to be one of those films where it threw me out of it. When it was like, well, this guy's racist, sexist. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> racist, sexist guy at the start. And all of a sudden, like he's had one conversation with a black guy and now he's fine. Like that was kind of characters can sometimes annoy me. Mm. Whereas he wasn't like that in this. Like enough happened to make sense for the way he changed. Yeah. Even then, I don't think he actually changed that much. I just think he decided to get his, like... Independent. You know, no, just to get himself... Uh, or get his <laughs> together, basically. I don't know, I'm going to have to blur that out. That's the only the way I can think of it. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, because he, uh, he's, it's not shown that he's kind of over his bigotry or his racism. It's just the fact that he's trying to do something good and trying to do something for himself. 
and that's and you know he kind of go inside with her and blah 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 and yeah no was... yeah the only character that I didn't really like was his mum okay. because she she <laughs> egged him on a lot like oh there's no friends that you could yeah I sort got, of associate I that, with though. and she's sort of egging on his bad behaviour mm-hmm. yeah I, that made sense to me though I didn't like Woody Harrelson's wife entirely no. because just her voice yeah what, yeah. Are, you, what yeah. are you meant to be I you're know. Australian <laughs> one second <laughs> yeah. you're American yeah. the other you're a little bit English for a bit it just confused yeah, that it was me. a bit weird because I think she's an Australian who's lived in America for a long time mm. so that's probably her natural voice and they wanted him to have yeah. like a bit of an exotic wife <laughs> 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 that makes but, sense now saying that you knew her from home and away no not no, not that wait no <laughs> Penelope oh, yeah. the, the intern yeah. <laughs> yeah also shout out to her for most underrated character yeah. <laughs> I thought she was She's all funny brilliant <laughs> I love her and everything uh, okay so we'll move on from there uh, did the film achieve <laughs> diegetic at all <laughs> what is, is this a sofa whatever her name I don't, is situation I can't remember her name oh. I was trying to do it <laughs> sofa Penelope I, we'll oh, okay that. All right. Sorry, Matt. Don't get upset. It's, it's a fine <laughs> I know. <laughs> I wasn't in the middle of a question, but it's Sorry, all right. Mate. No, it's fine. Uh, did the film achieve diegetic absorption? Were you absorbed in the film itself? Yes. Yeah. See, if, if we're going to start seeing more films in the cinema now as well, we've got that level of kind of yeah. shutting off. No one's like so. thinking about the phone at any point or anything like that. So mm. like, I think it's easier to tell in a cinema whether you're absorbed. Yeah. If you're watching it on Netflix or whatever, you're gonna, only going to be somewhat committed to it yeah but at least in a cinema you know whether you're getting bored or not and you know if you're getting bored it's because of the film entirely yeah whereas that didn't happen with me i was always curious where it was going mm. towards the end i was just like when is this actually going to stop <laughs> because yeah they kept felt like they were setting up endings like i think one of the lord of rings was like that i don't really remember but <laughs> sometimes <laughs> certain films they seem to be panning towards an ending and then they just don't mm. but i would have been happy watching out, another hour I, exactly yeah i would have been I was very invested in the people and the way they thought in yeah. the world because it wasn't predictable. It wasn't people you've seen before. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. That's four stars. Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. <laughs> that was my, like, self question. PG. We need to do, like, a good place thing and start saying, yeah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm on for that. Uh, uh, did Look, the movie change you? That's the thing. That's how it's going to get the five stars. I don't want it to, I don't want it to be worse than To the Bone. I'm like real invested in this film. Yeah. But I don't think I can really give it any credit for changing me. Yeah. I I'm mean, not... like, there's some interest in, you know, dilemmas, ethical, moral, moral, and moral, ethical, moral, 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 I'm saying. <laughs> right, there's some interesting questions in there that it raised, but it's not going to, like, change my way of thinking, I don't think. Mm. No. It wasn't really going out to, I think. I think it was just going out to give you, like, an interest in film with some. Real, like more real characters and just really make you question what how you felt about the decisions people were making yeah yeah it's, it's not like it's something that you can kind of learn from either i guess no not that i can think of i mean maybe you can if put I was yourself in, in that, that situation yeah. yeah and think where you'd be and what you'd do and what you'd feel was okay and not but other than that i don't yeah. think it's one that's particularly like trying to send out a message so yeah, I can't petition for any sort of half star or any other star. No. Though I, I will go on record to say it's, it's a, a much film. better film. Hell, f- oh yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but just based on this criteria, I can only can I give it a four and a half yeah. star. Yeah, it's disappointing, but I mean four star. Four star. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a better film. It's a shame. Yeah, we can accept that. It wasn't, and it did. I think it kind of did what it set out to do, as far as I was concerned. I do like the guy who made it a lot as well. I think it'd be interesting to see more big films being written by playwrights coming yeah. out because there was a different tone to it than most kind of things you go out now the dialogue is a lot more um you know measured and every word is very specifically chosen and important for yeah. the mm. thing is trying to process what a shame when we have the board up and going it means that that's going to be below to the bone no the, oh, the other one yeah yeah Ah, oh, well. So, so shall we go into the draft? Yeah. Sure. Now yeah. that we've done the Fast Time Movie Review, we're going to do the draft is where we all come together all head to head. We've got to replace one character in the uh, story. Um, well, three different characters, one story, well, one story, <laughs> one character per round if we're going to do that. And we'll yeah, vote whoever us. wins yeah. uh, is the, the TT World Champion. <laughs> I'm going to put it out there. I'm not very confident with one of my characters because it's so hard to replace how well the characters were in this. 
mm. we could go out and say like Sam Rockwell was hard to replace for all of us yeah. I think just because he was that great okay so uh, who wants to go first actually no Sophie as the winner of last week oh, yeah. and That's current so champion I get to choose who goes no <laughs> <laughs> good try <laughs> good try but no <laughs> okay uh, I'll, who do you want the character start to start with lead start with the uh, mom Mildred yeah yeah Okay, so to um, take over the character, I've chosen Sarah, who is from My Sister's Keeper, played by Cameron Diaz. Have you ever seen the film? Oh, no. <laughs> right. So, basically, um, she has two daughters. One daughter has um, cancer, and then she practically makes another baby just so her first daughter can have all the cells and have things transplanted through. Okay. 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 So yeah. it's um, I, I suppose in the same sense of it being like a desperate mom, of doing anything to make sure that the kids that she has are okay. Mm. <laughs> this draft is going to go terrible. But yeah, she's just <laughs> a frantic mom who she does everything that she can to make sure that her family's all right, and she doesn't trust anyone. So she goes out to take matters into her own hands. And can she act, Cameron Diaz? Uh, not in much, but in this she was really good. I was going to say, I've never seen her act. I don't think I can think of her actually acting, so it'd be interesting to see it. Unless it's a keeper, mm. yeah. Cause Sounds she's, like something she'd have to try in. Yeah, <laughs> she she's more of an annoying character because she's kind of selfish in it that she won't put anyone else first except her kid. Mm. And yeah, that's all I had for that because I, I just don't think I could replace you, uh, yeah, we, especially with how soon we've came out of it and how attached yeah. we are to everyone it's because it's been quite difficult yeah for also all of we'll, us. we'll go on note to say we've literally just come out of this this is the freshest yeah. we've ever been about a film we saw it like what two hours ago mm. just finished watching it two hours ago yeah so it's been very hard to come up with stuff yeah but yeah no that's a good pick thanks okay do you want to Even go next or shall I? Say, you go next <laughs> all right this is gonna make you laugh i had a few choices for this but I decided I would change <laughs> a change her for Jennifer Lawrence from uh, Winter's Bone, which is, I don't I know if a film. I was thinking that one. All right, so I'll just give a bit of context about the film then. It's a yeah. film where she's she play, she's very young in it. She's about 20 maybe. And she plays a, a kind of, are they Native American? I can't remember what they are. They're not Native American, right? Uh, they're not Native American, no. They're just, it's more kind of about back. They're like a subculture, sub like, of, I think there are some of them are Native Americans. And uh, that basically she's like, her mom's a drug addict drunk and she has to look after the little sisters and the dad's like a criminal off making meth and the dad dies, they're in a situation and she has to take responsibility for the family, mm. go up against the like, tribe effectively, against the chief on her own. Yeah. And she's this very kind of like strong, independent, she hunts, she rides horses and she's it's always been the person film. who provides. It's a really good film. Mm. It's one of the first things she did and got a lot of appeal from it. Yeah. But I just thought it'd be interesting to see her because again, she has that same kind of fierce maternal protectiveness but she's also a lot more feral kind of like she's like legitimate oh yeah like, the bit where she uh, skins animals and yeah. stuff oh, really? so it'd be you interesting see that on screen yeah well. and she mm. actually did it so it'd be interesting to have like in that community like the very separated old traditional native american community i imagine it being in yeah. and also her being the young girl who's going up against everybody not even like an old like an older woman yeah and uh being that responsible kind of figure, I thought it'd be really interesting to have her mm. as the lead in it. Yeah, no, that's very, that's very good. <laughs> I was thinking of that, but I thought she was a bit too young, so that's why I left it. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know why I tried to help out so much within your pitch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, good choice. <laughs> yeah, was, I know. So, so I've gone for someone who's a little bit older and kind of add that more of a badass sort of, you know, she's not going to stop uh, with... Well, I thought I wrote what down what he says. Go on. All right. Uh, um, I've gone for Charlie Theron. Balls. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm there now. Okay. As a mixture between like characters that she's been in in Mad Max and also Monster, in the fact of uh, yeah, I know yeah, okay. mainly more just I for did. the way that she looks because she's like much more uh, she wears hulking. Like, <laughs> she's like it's more prosthetic and she's kind of worn down. She's not like a usual self within that. Plus within Mad Max, she's much more of a kind of I'm kicking your ass sort of oh, yeah, character yeah. as well. And I just think her within this world, she can not get a lot more done, but she'd be kind of a lot more ball bearing with it mm -hmm. uh, in the world that she 
she's in. So, yeah. Yeah. That's You'd be oh, like, okay. Yeah. She'd go out like the, she'd, she'd literally. It wouldn't be like Molotov. She'd have like a flamethrower that she went after the police. Like, <laughs> <laughs> bit yeah. of a spoiler, but anyway, <laughs> forgot that. So we're we doing <laughs> it that. round by round. Yeah, we'll do it round by round. round I by think round. you got confused in last time. I'd say Dills. God damn it! I wish I'd said it now. <laughs> yeah, go on. I'll, I'll give it to you. I'm not gonna fight you. You didn't have my argument though, Matt. <laughs> mm. ah. <laughs> mm. yeah. There you go. Uh, All right. So goes goes next? Do we do winner of last round goes next yeah. round? Yeah, we'll do that. Like that. I know I don't like it. Will it be your Dixon? Oh God. Um, I'm gonna go for. Should we get Dixon out of the way? Yeah, sure. Let's get yeah. Dixon out of the way. He's the worst. I had a couple of. I had a few ideas, but I'm gonna go for the one that's least stupid. Unsurprisingly, I'm gonna say I'm gonna switch him. Dixon, actually maybe not him. All right, I'm not gonna do. Oh, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna say Wickers from District Nine, who's uh, Charlton Copley's character. In the start of that film, I don't know if you, any either of you have seen District no. Nine. So it's about in South Africa, aliens are, live there. They put them in these like shanty towns, and aliens live in these ghettos, and it's just like a kind of metaphor for black people, basically. Right. Okay. It's, but he's they call them prawns. <laughs> prawns. That was a terrible South African accent, but imagine that was good. <laughs> uh, he's at the start, he's like a bureaucratic guy. They're doing a documentary and he just works behind the desks. He's a bit kind of awkward and weird and uncomfortable and no one really likes him because okay. he pretends he's all, all, like full of it, but he's not really involved. He's like his wife, I think his dad run the company. Right, and so okay. no one has any real respect for him. And then he ends up getting in a situation where he has to go out on his own. Everyone's against him and he has to learn how to be independent and stuff. Yeah. But I just thought... The reason the reason I'd get him in would be a I like Charlotte Copley, but then b it would be he had a similar dynamic in terms of being dismissed, but this time it wasn't because of like, you know he's not as genuinely problematic as Sam Rockwell's character is. Yeah, he's just a little bit kind of separate and suck up and not comfortable. So I thought it'd be interesting to make it a bit more uh, make Sam Rockwell not quite as not quite as like obviously a catastrophe. Mm. So then all the kind of movement against him would be a bit more uh, kind of easy. Okay. I don't know what I'm saying. Right. But go on. I like that. Do you mean me? Nah. Okay. Because yeah. I don't want mine comparing to that. <laughs> okay. I well, I, I've kind of uh, taken this character in trying to focus more on the redemption story of, like, Dixon and going from, like, quite a bigoted guy to kind of coming around mm. and I've ta- <laughs> <laughs> no and I've taken the character um, Liam Neeson as Oscar Schindler uh, it's more kind of based around his character but basically he starts off as a war profiteer um, taking in profits from the Nazis and stuff to a complete 180 in the fact of he you know he weeps about not being able to save more people throughout that so and I want I want that kind of turn around within Dixon's character and the facts of he sees himself as this horrible bigoted racist uh, character and wants to do a whole turn and realise that he can be a good person and that he can do more and that's what he focuses a lot more to actually try and help uh, Mildred Hayes in trying to find who raped and killed her daughter yeah. so yeah Liam Neeson Alright, so if you're gonna have to say it at some point, <laughs> just get it done with. Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> Seth so... Rogen. <laughs> Shrek. <laughs> you're closer. Um, okay, so I decided okay. to take it a bit different. So rather than being this like self destructive um, character that sort of is angered and no one really likes him. I thought I'd take it to a character that's kind of too scared to go about and do stuff on his own and he gets blamed because he's so, like, unable to do things on his own. This could be anything. Shaggy. (laughs) From Scooby-Doo, right? (laughs) Listen, listen. He's too scared to commit to solving things alone. (laughs) You got my vote. He (laughs) He doesn't really know how to be in dependent he talks to a dog so no one really wants to associate themselves with him um and other policemen (laughs) think that he's a bit of a joke because he's trying to be involved but whatever he comes out with they're going to be like well no because you talk to a dog (laughs) (laughs) that that needs a stone that's amazing you know what i was going to say that the adaptation of that would be he smokes that much pot every single day that he imagines talking to a dog. <laughs> so everyone doesn't talk to him in that sense because he's talking to an imaginary dog. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, but yeah, no, I just thought that it's a different twist rather than people not wanting him to go out to do cases because he's so angry and stuff. It's mainly because they don't really think that he'd be a capable member of the police, but they don't want to let him down, because, like, let him go because he's harmless. Mm-hmm. Okay. Who are you voting for? I don't know. Definitely not myself, I don't think. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be an interesting film, I'll give you that. I'd watch it. I'm a tiny... I, I'm voting for you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch that. <laughs> so? Oh, um... Quick recap on both your characters. Um, bureaucratic, South African, alien person. Dad runs the company, so that's why he's there. Not dad, father-in-law. And uh, everyone's a bit kind of dismissive of him because he's a nerd and they're all genuine soldiers who kill aliens. Okay. And yours is Liam Neeson. Yeah, as an Oscar, kind of like an Oscar Schindler sort of character where he sees himself as this horrible character and wants to turn himself around to do good. And that's the reason why he helps her. Oh dear. Matt's staring at me really intently. Yeah, <laughs> he Matt, really Matt wants, wants it. this so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give it to Matt just because I feel like he's going to kill me otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and I'm going to vote for myself. Yeah, yeah. we need that. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm fine. I'm going to use the rules against us here. Okay, um, <laughs> the you final really character. This, don't you? I do. You don't realise that you, once you step the gauntlet down, there's a real All table right. over there. We shouldn't vote for it, like ourselves, I don't think, after this. <laughs> it's not really. That's just what I was thinking because it doesn't really. It doesn't matter. We can talk yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah, will it be? So, will it be? Matt. All right. As long as you gave yourself the win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm replacing Will. I was going to say Will Billaby. <laughs> it's not. It's Bill Willoughby. Um, replaced with Detective William Somerset, which is Morgan okay. Freeman in the film Seven. Um, oh, I not, thought of that. It's more changing him in that he's an old man and he knows he's you know one day he's going to per you know fall off the perch so to so to speak and. He, may, he just wants to help this woman crack this final case along with him as well because within the film seven that's the only thing he wants to do because this is like the last thing before his retirement as well so uh yeah th- th- this is what i want his final thing to be so i, I don't want him to uh, i don't i don't want to spoil anything yet um but a little bit more involved in the plot and actually finding out what happens plus he can kind of you know be someone there for her as well to talk to and i thought it'd be a nice mixture between the two Okay. Especially that kind of well, not, not that kind of character, um, Morgan Freeman with his colour being within I was gonna that say. society as well. It'd be nice to see them both be kind of outsiders work together, because that's the only thing that they've kind of got with each other as well. Okay. So that that's my pitch. No. Mine's very oh. similar to your. The character is. I've said Tommy Lee Jones from No Country for Old Men. Oh yeah. So again, he's cl- he's close to retirement. He's this grizzled, very very well respected, and he's always been around forever, policeman. And then uh, he kind of, I can't remember the No Country for Old Men. It's like it's a little bit out of his wheelhouse. The case, but he just ends up working on it because it's such a serious thing. But I think it'd be interesting with Tommy Lee Jones. A just because I'd like to see him as an actor doing the role I think he's kind of like it'd be interesting him like properly acting in something again like it feels like he hasn't done anything in a while mm-hmm. I thought that character would kind of like the metaphor for the, the like you know the metaphor of the whole piece being about his retirement I think that so you know that theory about No Country for Old Men mm-hmm. about how the whole the whole film's kind of a metaphor for his retirement so I think adding that extra layer into the film where you're about like you know, while this thing's going on, this guy's thinking about retiring. He's got a real crisis about who he's going to be once he's retired. Yeah. But I do to Matt's and to to Matt's character as in being an older cop, kind of a bit more grizzled and uh, n- like used to that scenario. But I think it'd kind of have a certain, you know, going against Tommy Lee Jones is a different type of gravitas than Woody Harrelson. Mm. So it, I can see a bit more like why all the town would be on his side because they don't really push that too much in this film. It's just kind of expect like they just kind of expect people to agree with him. Yeah. But, all right. Okay. And so I went with the same actor, but playing Hamish in oh, the games. Oh, mm-hmm. um, Because even though he's drunk a lot, you can tell that he means well, uh, and he's obviously lost a lot of people along the way. And even though he seems very guarded, he does end up helping people in the long run. Um, so he, he's not like the same character where. Because in this film, Three Billboards, you sort of like him anyway, whereas it's a bit harder to like Hamish as a character, mm-hmm. as a whole. 
Um, and he's been in a situation where he thought he was going to die and he's seen other people die and if he can help this other woman like get redemption for that then he would oh yes so, right. yeah no oh, yeah I like that I'm, I'm straight away gonna vote for Tavich I think that's Thanks. I think ours is a bit similar and I think that's a bit more of a kind of like It'd be an interesting direction to take it, mm. having him be kind of like the drunk who puts off the perception that he doesn't care what anybody thinks, but instead he's kind of a sensitive, Yeah, he's a very invested and he just doesn't want to open himself up type character. Yeah, It'd be an interesting way to go with it. And also being the loner as opposed to the family thing, Yeah, maybe that could add to the whole kind of tragedy of that character. Yeah. So I'm voting for Soph. Who are you voting for? Yeah, I'll go in as well. So is it one all? Have we yeah. all got one? God damn it. Do we have to come up with a fourth character and Maybe. then decide between us? Who would the fourth be? Penelope. <laughs> the, 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 the ex-husband? Maybe. Oh, man. Black oh, copper? Yeah. Not to call him a black copper. Let's copy. rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> yeah, let's just see the rock, paper, scissors and see who wins it. I'm up for doing that. <laughs> it's not the best deciding way, yeah, but we'll, we'll figure out a way in we'll the future. We'll come up with a better tiebreaker. All right, fine. So all right. we're doing three, two, one, and then go. Yeah, yeah. one. Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors, then show. Okay. Okay. Oh, no. I haven't got stuck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. One, one, two, two three. three. Oh, no. What? Is what? that your celebration, <laughs> by the way? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> mock, but that I is your, on the lead that is your oh my god you need to do that all the time as a celebration <laughs> <laughs> just, she just twisted her like fist at the wrist yeah it sounds so like a me, weird me Dr. Zeus both thing. went for scissors South went for rock and then she did she did the flick of the wrist <laughs> flick of the flick of the it's not the first time <laughs> she's beaten both with the rock <laughs> she's a real aggressive person yeah, this is a cry for help <laughs> this is the first time we've been allowed outside <laughs> <laughs> no but all right, yeah, all right. Oh, okay. so how about that family in America? Toll. Oh no. <laughs> Do you know I'll Here talk about this afterwards. It's yes. the craziest news story. The ones that kept uh... they kept they kept the kids trapped in that. They kept the kids like locked up from like twenty nine to it's like thirteen kids over a massive age range, Bloody and yeah. they'd take them out to like Disneyland and stuff. But the kids were like so. When the paramedics first went to the house, they were like, "Any you want to know any medication?" And the kids didn't know what medication was. They were just like, Jeez. "What?" And they're like, oh, "Medication." Yeah. Yeah, the oldest kid in there. Well, I can't really call him kid. He's like twenty nine. Yeah. Bloody hell. Two of them got out, and one of them just went straight back because they didn't know what else to do. Jesus. Mm. So yeah, there's a grim well, story. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Phil. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, sh- we should probably wrap it up there because we've been going for an hour and twenty minutes. <laughs> Although, all right. Yeah. Uh, why have you got more? No, no. No. No, I'm oh, good. Yeah. yeah. We're all good. Shall we, yeah. shall, we, shall we end the show there? Yeah, well, yeah. I bet it's a bit of a surprise review next week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then we'll, we'll do the ending, then we'll We'll, we'll, say, we'll, we'll say we'll put something on him. Um, we'll actually put something on social we'll media and we'll put the poster of the film up at some point. So just say that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, so thank you very much for listening, especially if you've made it all this way because people have actually been listening to our stuff, which has been really nice. Stop saying that. Yeah, you need to stop no, saying that. It's, it's, no, so it's good because <laughs> people have actually done it. So we thank you. It's, you know, we, we, we ramble for reasons. <laughs> uh, if you want to check anything Decent. out that we do <laughs> we ramble for reasons yeah I'll put that on the shirt send it out to you uh, um, yeah check out everything else that we do on the YouTube channel plus everything that's up on SoundCloud we're going to get some stuff up on social media soon uh, so if you want to keep up to date with us so yeah, yeah we'll announce the film we do next week on social media the one we'll be kind of reviewing and talking about yeah because we've not got a particular idea for that yet if you want to help us out with everything that we do uh, please head over to patreon.com to become a patron of what pictures I've been Matt Lidster to my left has been Sophie Ellis see and you. to my right has been Mr. Dylan Moir. see ya we've been Tripod Talk <laughs> and see ya see ya see ya, <laughs> see ya. <laughs> we are Tripod Talk that's what it is we are what pictures doing tripod talk yeah you can't be it. you can't be the name of a show I okay. can if I want right let's <laughs> see you <ya. laughs> yeah I suppose so yeah